I'm Pat Gunn, and this is a response to a recent video by Thunderfoot, which was itself a response to a post by Feminist Frequency uh, titled Tropes vs. Woman, The Damsel in Distress. Thunderfoot's video was called Feminism vs. Facts, uh, a response to dam uh, Damsel in uh, Distress. I think that Thunderfoot got some of the details particularly wrong, which isn't to say that he doesn't have uh, a point at all, and it, it isn't to say that the original video was um, entirely or particularly uh, correct in its analysis. There are some strands of feminism that are particularly problematic, and there are some strands of feminism that are particularly healthy, and I think as a community, uh, those of us who are involved in some form of gender activism need to get decent at providing careful criticism when parts of the, or well, when one of the feminist movements uh, that's working for the feminist cause goes off the rails. Uh, naturally, because there are so many different movements and they operate with different theories, they have different standards for how to communicate with each other, and they have a different willingness to depart from the mainstream. Some of them are going to develop problems. I'm of the opinion that the further any movement, regardless of whether it's aiming for social justice, uh, a different economic system, or anything else, the further it gets from the mainstream, the more likely it is to develop problems. The reason for this is that it's going to stop communicating with the mainstream and it's going to become too critical of any criticism that it receives. It, it will dismiss such criticism as being reactionary. Um, it'll essentially turn what's a voice of reason into a it'll parse it as a voice of treason and um, and once it l once it loses the ability to receive criticism even well-meaning intelligent criticism it's it loses the checks that keep it sane so I think that activism is best done near the mainstream you, you don't want activism though that's too tame to actually attempt to change the world. If, if it op tries to operate from too much of a mainstream perspective, then it, it's essentially worthless because it's too timid. So, so you want to be near the mainstream, but not in it. So let's, let's move through uh, Thunderfoot's uh, video, and, uh, and these, are, these are my comments. You'll obviously want to actually watch his video and the source video before you uh, before you watch mine because I'm not going to edit bits of his or her video uh, into mine. So the, the first point is an analysis oh, is an analysis of a video game, and Thunderfoot makes the point that a video game that ends with a woman in a skirt. Uh, punching somebody, uh, punching a, a giant robot who's falling out of the sky, punching it in the balls and having it break into bits. That invalidates any charges of possible sexism uh, in that game. I think that's off. Now, firstly, we, we can consider that that's actually more or less a joke. And as such, it, it really can't be making much of a point about the strong role of, uh, role of woman. It's, it's meant as an amusement. And secondly, it, it's not, uh, it's still uh, an afterthought in the game. So, one of the, uh, one of the other defenses that, uh, that Thunderfoot makes uh, about video games is part of his general go build an alternative idea is that the the only uh, the only standard by which we should judge uh, games is if they're fun to play or if they make a lot of money. We shouldn't privilege capitalism uh, in that way. We should consider 
anything to be potentially a valid target for social uh, criticism. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that our standards for, uh, for social criticism should be such that we're going to criticize everything or criticize any possible expression. And this is an area where I think we could see a, a much more intelligent criticism of some of the hypercritical feminist movement uh, or feminist movements that they don't provide any uh, any standard or even a reasonably wide standard for culture to operate. And this, this is actually the criticism that I make of what I consider to be the hypercritical flavors of feminism, that they're in so much of a, of a rush to shape society that they go well beyond what's warranted. Uh, and I, I prefer a fairly narrow uh, notion of criticism when it comes to cultural content. I, I prefer to say that unless content is clearly normative, that is, if, if it clearly pushes on the norms of society and says that uh, women are destined or only suitable for a certain role, unless it says that, I'm not willing to offer strong criticism, although I would be happy to see more content that does portray women in, in more uh, in more varied roles in in uh, in culture in movies books etc and uh, but but I think that that preference doesn't rise to the level of automatically criticizing anything that doesn't uh, that by omission fails to provide for um, the, the possibility of strong female characters or the possibility of strong characters of of non non white origin or any of the other types of diversity that it would probably be healthy to see more of in, in gaming or in books, movies, etc. And we also don't want to necessarily see diversity as being token, like having superhero teams that like have the black guy and having that as being like filling filling the role in the roster. Why can't there be two black guys or two two women, and you end up having things like the Bechdel uh, test that are particularly good at figuring out, are we just doing it, this for token diversity, or are we actually having more of a natural distribution of characters and games? Uh, because token token diversity doesn't really help a lot, but even, at, at, even considering these things to be Things that, th things that are pluses, I don't think that we necessarily need to be so negative for things that aren't really designed to, with those thoughts in mind. I'm, I'm only really willing to offer or accept strong criticism, uh, criticism when there's actual either, or yeah, when there, basically when there's strong intents to shove women into the role of being acted upon. But, uh, but so this is one of the areas where I think Thunderfoot fails. And, and deciding that making money is, uh, excuses everything, that's, that's missing out on a big point. You don't get to choose the standards you're judged by. Everybody's going to judge you with whatever standards are relevant to them. Some of those standards are reasonable, some of them aren't. But just deciding making money is what counts I mean, you're entitled to your own standards, but you're not in entitled to not be criticized. Uh, what you can do when you're criticized in a way that you think is unjust is offer cross-criticism, uh, which I think that Thunderfoot is, is actually doing, and it's, it's healthy. But it shouldn't be done with the tone of, don't criticize me, except to the extent that maybe such criticism is part of a unhealthy uh, cultural elements uh, in this movement, and uh, and when it comes to the damsel in distress thing, this is an area where I think that we probably should be worried in a in a low key way. That uh, it's not that, or, or basically the reason that I would say that it should be a low key way is that there isn't necessarily an intent to be misogynistic when producing this kind of content. 
but it's still a problem when women are always the ones who are acted upon. And here I think Thunderfoot is, uh, is missing the point in that he's providing a false dichotomy. Either women would accept being helped when they need it, or uh, women reject that help and suffer. Uh, and, and so the guy is left with the opportunity of helping out or not helping out. But the problem is that's not, those aren't the only options here. Why, why are we restricted to situations where men are the actor and it's only men choosing whether to be uh, helping out uh, or, not help, uh, or not helping out? I mean, where are the, the situations where women are the ones who are choosing? And so it would actually be a, a rather nice thing to see women with agency and women who can decide um, who, who can decide whether to help out their guy or or their woman, because uh, we we also don't necessarily want heteronormativity here. We should treat women, uh, if, if we're going to be the authors of, uh, of fictional works, we should consider that uh, women can be the primary actors in them, and that gays can be the primary actors in them, or bisexuals, or blacks, or there should be a diversity of primary actors in, in these works, and we're not seeing a lot of it. Now, again, this doesn't mean that we have to criticize every, every work for not being diverse enough, but it does mean that maybe we're not, uh, we're not providing to, to youth or to adults the idea that anybody who, uh, who isn't uh, a white male has agency. And so we probably should be happy to see more diversity now I think we actually are seeing some of this diversity. There are games like Metroid or Portal, and we uh, and the the recently popular uh, current version of My Little Pony, um, Powerpuff Girls. It, these things are healthy, and we should hope to keep on seeing more of these things. And I think. I think when we consider Thunderfoot's criticism of uh, uh, of the uh, I don't I don't remember her name the author of that feminist frequency video when we consider uh, her um, her original posting or I mean uh, her uh, her graduate thesis about uh, uh, about gender normativity and uh, fem uh, and gender essentialism. He, he might have a point there, but I would be willing to credit her with the idea that her ideas may have evolved. Thunderfoot just assumes that there's inconsistency, but sometimes people's views change. And gender essentialism has always been a contentious topic in feminism. And it's been one of the dividing lines between the different waves of feminism. And uh, I happen to be of, uh, of the flavor. Uh, I, I'm of a particular second wave flavor of feminism that, uh, that happens to be a, uh, a gender, role, um, gender role abolitionism. So I'm, I'm very anti-gender uh, essentialist. I don't think that we need to consider certain characteristics to be particularly suited to men or particularly suited to women. Um, that doesn't mean that I don't have preferences and the people who I uh, prefer today, um, be they men or women, but uh, I don't think that my preferences need to be the way that men or women need to be uh, all in all. Uh, I consider genetics, uh, I, I mean, I, I do consider gender to, to be essentially a genetic matter. But I don't think it needs to mean a lot. Uh, I don't think it needs to mean. Uh, I don't think it needs to mean a lot. Uh, I think that masculinity and femininity are, by and large, harmful ideals that we can uh, that uh, that we might uh, live as as people. Some people talk about performing gender. 
those people are actually operating from a different gender theory than, than I do. Uh, I would probably say performing gender roles, um, since I lay out the terms a little bit differently than a lot of, particularly third waivers do at this point. But, um, but yeah, I, I would say it's, it's healthy to move beyond gender roles. But I, I think the video that I saw, or um, uh, I saw her put forth, seemed to be more in agreement with me than what I read uh, of her, um, or at least what uh, Thunderfoot uh, presented of her earlier, um, uh, of her master's thesis, or might have been her, P, uh, her dissertation. Um, either way, I, I think people's views can evolve on these things, and certainly my views on feminism have evolved over the years, and I've gotten in a lot of arguments with people and had good discussions with people who saw things differently. And I think that we should generally try to credit people with the possibility of, of changing their views. Now, Thunderfoot might be right. Maybe she's being inconsistent, and maybe she's presenting no way to win. But in this case, I, I generally would tend to assume particularly when there's a span of years in between when people write on a topic that they might have changed their mind. Now, so again, uh, or so when Thunderfoot uh, brought forth the idea that the traditions damage uh, men, that, that men tend to be the ones dying in wars and things like that, sure. I think he's actually right on that, but he draws the wrong, uh, wrong conclusion from it. Instead of deciding let, uh, to appreciate men for doing this kind of work, what we should do is, is help to make both roles uh, available to both women and men. Men don't have to be the saviors of women. Women don't have to be the saved. Instead, uh, men could be either, women could be either. And ideally, we should hope to usually in society have more of an even and not so specific role for women and men. Uh, women and men should be partners in society. They should be partners in the workplace. They should be partners in marriage. Neither, uh, neither side should dominate the other. Neither uh, side needs to be the decider. And when we reach that realization, then we no longer uh, we no longer run into this kind of problem. We don't. Uh, we probably would see fewer video games where it's always the men saving the woman. And uh, and so we don't need to decide. We either need to appreciate men for being uh, the violent ones who risk their lives, or decide that men are shit for doing that. We can decide to appreciate or not appreciate the, the warrior ethos, whether it's held by a woman or a man. And we can decide to still try and do the right thing when people have needs. And the, the comparison with hospitals is just, uh, it's a mistake, because I think we would probably find hospitals a little bit weird, or police a little bit weird, if only one gender, uh, if only one gender could be the doctors or the police, because we would, uh, we just decide, let's abolish this, uh, the gender specificity there. And uh, and that so that that's just an area where the analogy falls apart. So, regarding uh, Thunderfoot's criticism of so build it, uh, you're just a critic. Well, there's nothing wrong with being a critic. There's nothing wrong with being concerned about an issue and deciding to try and enunciate ways to address that issue. Not everyone is skilled as an author. Not everyone has the skills to put together a video game. And for that matter, as a programmer, occasionally you, uh, you see people who get really decently put together criticism about how software is put together and they say, so code it. The problem is not everyone is a programmer and sometimes the skills to provide this kind of feedback, uh, they, um, they don't tend to mesh uh, so well with, uh, with programming, or they tend to be rather evolved skills where people need to work to figure out what good graphics design looks like. And sometimes the, the, the path that people take in life to become a good programmer 
tends to alienate, uh, alienate us from a lot of the other human concerns that uh, that are useful in designing good GUIs or good things like that. So let's accept criticism. Let's not decide unless you build it, your opinion doesn't matter. Because uh, offering cultural criticism, it's a very valuable thing, and it's not. It's also it's not good enough to decide. Well, the market isn't providing uh, this, so therefore, uh, therefore you're wrong. Markets aren't magic. They don't produce necessarily the, re uh, the results that are good for society. And it's helpful for us to try and have voices uh, that are responsible for society. And um, let's close off with his uh, mentioning of, uh, of strength. He honed in on this when, uh, as, as a point in her uh, thesis. She mentioned strength as a particularly uh, masculine trait, and, uh, and, and then he contrasted that with her saying that strength isn't, um, uh, strength isn't something that's exclusive to men. And he went off on what I consider to be a complete tangent by equating of strength to physical strength. It isn't. Uh, strength is a word that has many meanings, and while physical strength is probably a component of what she was talking about, it wasn't the only component. And uh, there, uh, there's emotional strength, there's willingness to perform violence, there's willingness to be stern, to be resolute. All these things could be considered strength. And all these things are things that women can exercise. There are violent women in the world. There are violent men in the world. Both of them are as capable of violence. And pointing to a Wikipedia article showing that men have greater mus uh, musculature on average, it's, it's not good enough. A, a woman with a gun is certainly capable of inflicting violence. And with... Uh, with, uh, with biological strength, these are just uh, statistics. You have a range of physical strength in women and men, and just because you can show that, the, that men, on average, have significantly more strength doesn't mean that uh, there aren't women out there who are incredibly uh, strong. And upper body strength certainly isn't the only kind of strength. There are women who run marathons who could uh, could probably run the pants off of most men. So I I think that it's it's not a it's not an intelligent approach to harp on her words of um, uh, of saying that uh, that w that women can be as strong as men to just point to Wikipedia and say that on average men have more strength than women. That's a rubbish approach. Now, as for his uh, criticism of some some parts of that Wikipedia article that dug into feminist-led research, yeah, maybe he has a point there. We'd actually need to look at the specifics of that research to decide whether it's something done under uh, a feminist studies umbrella or not. There are some branches of feminism in academia, particularly the third wave Foucault-centric uh, feminism, gender studies, queer studies, uh, generally the minority studies uh, departments in universities are pretty questionable and a lot of their research is rubbish or it's opinions masquerading as scholarship, opinions masquerading as fact. And we would be right to offer criticism uh, of that research, but, that, but we actually have to do more than hand wave at it and some of it is perfectly good research. Um, it's not good enough to just say, well, this is done by a feminist, therefore it's rubbish. We might be right to be suspicious of it, but, it, uh, but we need to actually do the work if we want to say that a sp specific bit of it is bad. So I, I, just, I think it's lazy to just uh, point at its origin. Uh, unless, I mean, I, I suppose we could decide that um, certain types of research, uh, 
certain types of research are categorically bad. Um, but I, I think if we're going to take that position, it would be helpful to lay out a theory um, or to at least distinguish the different flavors of feminism and, uh, and offer theories to which bits of it are bad and which bits of it are healthy. I'm not certain if Thunderfoot is actually operating from a position where he thinks that men are naturally uh, bound, to, uh, bound to be the savior and women not to be the savior and either we recognize uh, men or we consider them shit. Or if he's, uh, or if he has a more nuanced position, I, I think it would be helpful for him to actually lay out more of how he sees uh, gender roles in society um, so that we can find out what he's thinking on these topics. But I think that this, this video in particular wasn't, um, it wasn't a very good example of criticism of a feminist position which is not to say that uh, that the feminist frequency is either in this specific case or in general a, uh, a decent publication. Um, I don't know enough about the feminist frequency to make an opinion on it at this point. But the, the type of criticism that Thunderfoot is offering is not good enough and it shows a lack of care um, when it comes to how he's constructing his arguments. So those are my thoughts on, uh, on this topic and I welcome comments and discussion below and uh, maybe I'll see you in a future video.